Good morning. I'm Sabri Krishnan. I'm your host of the session today. And uh, welcome to day three of uh, JNAC uh, 2023. And hope everyone had a good time at the JNAC party last night. And um, hopefully you have a wonderful day three. Um, as a sort of housekeeping reminder, please use the app for questions to register questions, and we can uh, read out during the Q&A session. Um, and today, um, we have uh, Carlos Echevarria and Esteban Marine from Veterinary Emergency Group to talk about Jamf, how they're using Jamf Trust and how they found even found use cases for Jamf Trust uh, beyond what uh, you may have been used to. So with that, uh, gentlemen, the stage is yours. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Carlos, I am a seasoned technical manager with over 30 years of experience, including 15 years as a JAM senior engineer spanning many industries. Having worked in internal and external startup level companies and as a consultant, I have a deep holistic knowledge of the industry. My strong expertise coupled with my passion for developing teams allows me to effectively drive projects forward and advocate for the best possible solutions, no matter the challenge. Hi, my name is uh, um, Esteban Marine. Nice to meet you all. Um, I'm a seasoned network engineer, bringing a wealth of knowledge from, uh, from my past experience. Combining my customer service military background has allowed me to develop solutions for any size of organization. I have found a niche <clears throat> in state-of-the-art security where I specialize in firewalls, network access control, IDP, and VPN. Throughout my professional journey, I have co uh, constantly utilized these skills to bring me value to, uh, to any team and project <clears throat> I'm the stakeholder in. So let me tell you a little bit about us. We're VEG, the Veterinary Emergency Group. VEG takes a radically different approach to veterinary emergency medicine. We've transformed the ER experience so it works for people and their pets. From our fully open, immersed hospital environment to our emergency-focused team, our customer-centered approach to care. At over our 55 locations nationwide and growing, we're there if you want to build a fulfilling career in veterinary emergency, and above all, we're here to help people and their pets when they need it the most. <clears throat> so a little bit about the agenda. As we look further into Jamf Trust, we realize that it solved for an existing pain point we had. We looked at our current tool sets for solutions in an effort to minimize time and money. Nothing really presented itself as a viable solution. Based on all of this, we then asked the question. It's funny how everything starts with a question. <clears throat> the challenges that we face as we are a lean team we needed to use a product that, that, will grow, uh, that will grow with us and be flexible, as Veg finds itself in a rapid um, growing phase. Then Carlos reached out to me to see if, if, it was, uh, if, this, uh, if this was a possible solution for Veg, or just another crazy, uh, uh, a crazy idea of his, which by the way, I'd like to add, there are many. Building out the solution has several issues our organization was running into. All right, VPN. All of us have run into this issue. VPN is the bane of our existing existence for some employees and it's hard to manage. Almost everyone in their professional IT career has run into this issue. Countless issues led to us looking at Jam Trust for the solution. The VPN connections were so bad that even our support team was coming out blasting like Yosemite Sam. The solutions we rolled out were not seamless or scalable. They were very clunky, to say the least, and it is still a headache. How can we make this better for everyone? So, Jam Trust. How did this product address our VPN issues? Jam Trust gave us a next generation zero trust network. We can allow block access to our SaaS applications with Jam Trust, regardless of the device being institutional or BYOD device. These are the core features that Jamf Trust offers out of the gate. So in reading the documentation and speaking with the team, I came up with a question, what if? I reached out to Jamf, asked them the right questions. I submitted a drawing and waited. Two and a half weeks later, they replied, yes, it is doable. 
And now let's show you how we did this. At the moment that we were setting this up, we only had 24 hospitals that needed support. Presently, we're at 57 hospitals. This is important to us because this shows the scalability of the product. Initially, the configuration profiles that were configured for each location were pushed out through Jamf. I'd like to go over the, the, the few of the pain points that we had using the, the system before we moved over to Jamf Trust as for our VPN solution. Every time we build up a new site, <clears throat> I had uh, I had to test out the site before I was able to provide Carlos with the host name in order for him to build the profile in Jamf. If, not, uh, if, I was not a, uh, if I was not advised of a new team member, this prolonged that access to, to the VPN for that particular user and added extra troubleshooting steps for different IT teams as, a, uh, as this ticket will be escalated throughout our, uh, uh, throughout our team. We needed to create a local Meraki account per region this also added human, um, human error across. As um, if one region was missed, then that user would not be able to connect to that region. The VPN, uh, the VPN connections are, well, were disrupted every time a new profile was pushed. The VPN uh, menu bar will, would disappear and reappear. Established connections were dropped and requiring the team member to reconnect. When we began to group configuration profiles into regions, we added locations to them accordingly, but we still ran into the same issue as the bond mentioned. While our support team could handle the disruptions, it negatively impacted our customers' experience. This is a common issue many of us have run into before. As any other solution we would have uh, taken into consideration had a significant cost and lift. No matter what pr product it was, we, uh, if we, uh, we would have to look outside of our existing applications that would have been available for us and, and it would require additional purchases. No matter what solution that we, uh, we looked into, the cost was high and so was the tech debt. And considering that we are a very lean team, also and the, uh, uh, the question would have been is how, how could we do support this? <clears throat> so, after uh, a game plan was made after speaking with, with Jam support team, I would explain the steps I took into, uh, into order to route our traffic. Please keep in mind that this, this may sound simple. However, it requires some engineering and planning depending on your environment. I also like to add that in all honesty, it would, it, it, the connection between Jam Trust and um, AWS it actually could be done within 10 minutes. <clears throat> the first thing, the first thing, we had to set up. Uh, we have to set up uh, Jam Trust, just tr Jump Trust, and uh, Car um, and Carlos set up the configuration. I then had to connect uh, Jam Trust routing to our AWS environment. The next step was to configure, deployed our VMX into our environment. This way, our, our hospitals um, could be able to talk to each other. Then connect the VMX to um, to uh, many of our regions. Lastly, we set up the routing and the routing between our AWS um, gateway to our, uh, to our v, uh, virtual, uh, virtual MX. Then Carlos <clears throat> deployed the profile and app to, to identify user for testing. This was crucial as, as it provided the much needed feedback and the business case for this. The, inter the integration allows the network administrator to centralize, centralize and manage the network traffic, which enhanced our visibility and control. Moreover, the, uh, moreover this integration provided additional security measures to safeguard our sensitive data during transmission, especially since all of our traffic is flowing in our trusted devices. Now, Carlos does not need to maintain multiple profiles for each site. Once we set up a new site, the team can access them immediately without any additional steps. And I would like to add to, like, because um, just from this uh, this PowerPoint, I actually went last night to actually understand it because since we did this uh, over a year ago, and now I could tell you I could do deploy this within 10 minutes. So before we travel down this path, does this hit every possible wish list that we have? Let's take a look. Establishing VPN access via Jeff Trust has become much easier. You could uniformly push out access to networks via Jeff Trust not just Mac OS, but iOS, Android, and Windows devices as well. No need to manually select different VPN profiles for different sites. This saves time and effort for administrators alike. The, the ongoing maintenance has been simplified with Jamtrust. 
There's no need for a separate VPN profile to be de uh, to deployed to the new user location br um, brought online. It has to reduce the complexity of our environment and streamline control. I, uh, I only need to uh, touch and update our VMX correlate. I never need to touch and update our a uh, AWS routing table uh, for new locations. Gone are the days given Carlos host names for, a new, for every new location for a profile to be created. I no longer I no longer need to, uh, to worry about granting access to new team members as it is now handled through Okta. The scalability has been achieved. And the solution makes my life so much easier and it makes our lead network engineers life easier as well. It was a short presentation. It was very high level, but we're just showing you what you can do with Jamf Trust and. Now, I welcome you to any questions you may have, any challenges we face, and just let us know what questions you have that we may help out showing you how to set this up. Anyone? Uh, we don't have any questions on the app. Anyone in the audience have questions I, here? I got, I got <laughs> Uh, you said that when um, before you went into Jamf Trust for VPN access, uh, who was the provider there, or what a VPN client were you using before or prior? Okay, so um, we're a Meraki shop, so we were using the built-in firewall. So it was very clunky because for every location, Esteban would have to get the DNS name. I would have to then create a profile for that location with the shared secret and password and push it out to all of our team. That may sound simple if you have four or five sites. Presently, when we started this, we were at 24 hospitals. Right now, we're at 57 and growing. It becomes very cumbersome, and there's human error in that if I don't copy the host name correctly or if the shared secret changes. Moreover, <coughs> every time I pushed out a new location, it would cause havoc on the team's computer. Their network stack would fall. It would re-render. It would take up to 20 minutes for you to click, and at 24 locations, you go Prr. Now imagine 57. You gotta keep on scrolling down. So it worked, don't get me wrong, but Jam Trust allowed us to make it a lot better because now we don't have to select a network. We're all on the network. And also I'd like to add, now we have control of entry to our VPN, right? So the way they had it, every location was a, is, is different in gateway. So that also was a security risk. Just as a reminder for our virtual participants, you can post a question via the app. And uh, there's a question, uh, is trust always on or on demand? Well, <clears throat> that's kind of like a two-part trick question. So, mm -hmm. it, it, and I'll explain. It is on-demand VPN. But right now, since they're making changes with Jamf Connect and Jamf Trust, what's gonna end up happening is that as a user signs in, with um, Jamf Connect, it will automatically turn on Jamf Trust through SSO. Right now, that feature is not available, but for those that are in the know and join the beta testing, you will see that that's something they're working on. So Jamf Trust is always running; it's on demand when you make the network connection. So it does not slow down your connection to that location or your machine. It's on demand. Also, like to one add from uh, I'm giving you from a network point of, uh, point of view is that you could set up rules to actually have just a particular host name to go into and um, go um, travel through Jamf Trust, or you could have the, the v, um, set up the rules via IP address. What this is good for is like if you have an internal app, and let's say um, xyz.com, then all that, the traffic, like new site at that abc.com will, will be routed through Jamf Trust. We have one another question online. I'm interested to know how you set up Jamf Trust to make your network VPN work. Do you have any additional documents, or could you show us a sample of the setting you have set? I don't know. I, uh, do you guys have a set? I don't have a, a sample of a settings, but in the documentation, all it really was is just connecting the Jamf Trust gateway to the site-to-site um, -site VPN on the AWS. And then we did our routing internally after that. Like Esteban mentioned, in working with Jamf, he had that up running in 10 minutes. It was just him reading, getting the documentation ready and the host names. Once he had that up, 
he sent me a message. He's like, it's ready. I, I didn't believe it. But once he told me, I was like, whoa, it's working. So the partial on answer is if you want to do the same, please reach out to Jamf and yep. they'll help you do that. Okay. Well, yeah, absolutely, because every environment's different, right? Yeah. In our situation, we're using Moroccan, we use the VMX, and the VMX allowed us to make that easier. So we don't know what other, other businesses may have, but definitely reach out. Yeah, okay. Next question, how granular are your access policies after you switched from full tunnel VPN to Jamf Trust ZTNA? Is as granular as you want to make it. You, I could make it for just one IP address, I could make it for one, um, just one host name. So it depends how granular, and it's actually setting up the policies. It's, it, it doesn't take that long. It's one of the easiest VPN I ever had the pleasure to work with, because you could set it up just for a, a CIDR 32 to a, like, to a CIDR 8, right? Um, depending on what you want to, what you want to accomplish. All right. uh, any questions from the audience? I don't have any on the app yet. My understanding is within Jamf Trust, you have multiple gateways um, that you can select for regions. Did you have to deal with different regions? And no, what, let me rephrase this. The thing is, I was trying to not to use the, the Meraki kind of term. Is that when we meant regions, we're talking about different templates in the Meraki. Um, but no, but I, I understand. Oh. I'm sorry, your question is different regions that they have servers? Yeah, uh, in, in the Jamf Trust, oh. the gateways. Okay. So. Very good question. So what we did, because um, a couple of months ago, a couple of IPs changed, and we were like, oh, we're never going to use that region. But we never anticipated some of our users traveling. So what we ended up doing is, is we ended up adding all the IPs for every node. And in the documentation, there's a long list, copy and paste as your friend. Put those in there. That way, if anybody's traveling, you don't have to worry about that. So the gateways can be dynamic for, uh, for, the, for the user based on where they're where Correct. They're it, it will to. hit the nearest node available to them. So let's say somebody's traveling to Europe. They don't have to travel. The, no, the traffic doesn't have to travel back to the U.S. to a server over here. Yep. They'll find a server that's local to their region. And there's a, a lot of IPs, a lot of regions that I don't know by heart, but there's a lot of them. If you yep. do set this up, I would recommend personally copy and paste all of them so you don't find yourself in a situation that somebody's traveling and IT isn't told and then Jam Trust is not working. Okay, great. And also, to give you some context, we have somebody um, who's in France, and they're routing traffic uh, through our Jam Trust right now. They're also on a PC. Uh, I don't feel good about that. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Would the VPN be able to restrict certain geolocations to prevent access to resources? Well, like he just said it, right? If you don't add the region in Europe, then you won't be able to you won't yeah. be able to log in. Okay. Um, just so I heard it clearly, so someone's in France using a PC, but you're routing through Jamf Trust. Is that correct? That is correct. It's routing to the nearest node in Europe. I don't nearest know. I don't Europe. know which one it is, but okay. it's routing there. So it's not crossing across, and that's what makes it fast. Yeah. We have our own internal. Uh, yes, uh, uh, there's a component here where our team uh, built our own internal in-house application, and our developers are overseas, and the only way they could get into this application is with Jam Trust, basically. That's how we protect. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Uh, anyone else in the audience have a question? We did good. No more questions? Uh, El Majime did it good? <laughs> and uh, just to, like, um, are you guys on the Jamf Nation um, forums if someone wants to sure, find you? Sure, absolutely. Be able to find I'll, you there? Even, I'll even provide more content. So okay. on, on Tuesday, I went to the Jamf CX, and I was there for longer than I should be, but we were troubleshooting an issue. I was able to nuke and pave my computer. You know, back to 13.5.2. But I was back connected to our network within minutes once the computer enrolled and it laid down the profiles. I was back in Jam Trust. It was quick, easy, and seamless on this slow network that we're all experiencing. So I was back up and running in about 10 minutes. 
no downtime. So um, we, you talked about the internet gateways, um, but then there's also private gateways for internal DNS. Did you utilize any of that? Yes, we did. We still have, um, we have a DNS. Um, you know, we use a DNS, like I said, like, like a host name, like, mm -hmm. and then we put the IP address that we needed to on it. Because I think the Jam Trust actually works, like I said, it works by a host, a host names and works by IP address when setting up the rules. So like you could have access, I could just, let's say for example, I want to give you access to a, print, uh, to a printer for some reason in uh, XYZ hospital. I could just put the, um, that IP address into a host name that we, uh, and then I, for that one particular printer, and you don't have access to no, none of the other resources of the company, but you will have access to that, to that particular printer. Also, to the point that Ariel brought up earlier, we're using both scenarios, right? So we're using IP for our hospitals when we need to connect to our hospitals, but we're also using the host name for the developers. So we kind of done a, a little separation of state and church. So <laughs> traffic routes this way and never crosses over, and traffic routes this way and never crosses over. So our support team can never hit the AWS servers. Our developers can never VPN into any device. Good question. Any other question from the audience? So I think we have someone joined newly on the virtual and they had upvoted one of the questions. So I'm gonna repeat that question again so that you can answer that, uh, which is how granular are your access policies after you switch from full tunnel VPN to Jamtrust DTNA? Well, right now, they're as granular as you, you, you want them to be. Right now, we, we separated for the, the developer team from our uh, support team. But they're as grand as you want to make it. Like I said, you could go as down to one particular device for the one particular person. And, then, and we have tested it because we wanted to make sure this worked. And it has worked that way. Also, in a traditional full VPN, you get impacted with the, your speed transfer. You could have a high-speed connection at work with a full VPN. It just throttles you down based on the host you're connecting. With this, it's a full tunnel VPN on demand. So when we're remoting to a location, we're getting line rate. It's not slowing us down at all. Awesome. Um, any further questions uh, from the virtual audience or from the live audience? Keep <laughs> on going, dude. Bring them on. <laughs> Bring them on. Um, on, the, on the config profiles that you pushed out, just want to get an idea of any of the gotchas, any gotchas you had. When you, you, know, you said test and verify, mm -hmm. is there anything that just was counterintuitive and said, oh, wait, no, that's not going to work? Something for us to look out for? Um, good and question. Because, because of you know, re, re, uh, pushing out new profiles or, or updating profiles in, in trust is a big pain <laughs> coming across that. Well, it's actually easier. So when we were doing it with Meraki, and we were adding a new location or a region, because we try to be smarter than the average bear, it would always redo the network stack. And if it was a re it came worse, it became worse when it was a region and we added a new region, and if somebody was connected, it would have to remove the profile and add it again, because it saw a new location, and then if somebody from a support team was connected, it would drop the connection. With Jamf Trust, you got two caveats. Very simple. The first one is the bootstrap. You need to push out the bootstrap to every device. Mm -hmm. That way when you enable it, it doesn't ask for allow, 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 allow. You know, it's very seamless. The second thing is when you build out your profile, so we have our support team and we have our developers. So we made a profile for each one. So the developers, so through Okta, when it sees it, they get that. So if they hire a new developer, it automatically gets that profile. So all the user does right now, when they first get their computer and it's configured, they click on Jamf Trust and sign in, and it redirects them to Okta off to the races. Yeah. I so just it like, makes it simple. I like to add one thing, though. Just be patient with it, because let, let's say, for example, if you're connected, update your policy. You don't need to disconnect or reboot your computer, but you do need to give it like a couple of, ten, a couple of like 10 minutes in order for, the, for your Jamf Trust endpoint to actually get updated. Yeah, it's like a check-in. Yeah. Right. And then if you have somebody on developer and you add them to another thing, you don't have, when you push out that profile or update that profile, it doesn't interrupt them because the bootstrap's already there. It's just updating the new rules. Yeah. Just to, to, to 
configuration profile just updates automatically and yeah. those changes yeah, take it's, place. Yeah, it's quick. Like, I didn't think it was going to work here because the internet connection is so slow because there's not a lot of people in this conference, but it came through. As soon as the computer, I nuked and paved and it came back up and I enrolled, I signed in, I was back in business, unfortunately. <laughs> Any other questions? You're hitting, you're hitting us hard. Come on. Yeah, I know. Um, Bring it on. <laughs> yep. Sorry. Uh, in, in, in the activation profiles, what were all of the different features that we're I using? You. You know, with, were you including you know, DNS along with ZTNA, along with access uh, so uh, it's content no. filtering or anything? <clears throat> no. So it's easier because all we're doing is we're putting the bootstrap. So follow the, the documentation to get the bundle ID and everything that has to go out, right? Mm -hmm. The second configuration profile actually comes from Jam Trust. So when you're in the console and you make your groups, developers, help desk, printers, whatever you want, you just click on it and it gives you like um, your mapping. It, between, yeah, it gives you like a 12-digit code. So when you go back into configuration profiles, you put that in and then you assign it to your device or your group or uh, your LDAP lookup, and then it just pushes out. So it's really easy. It's quick and easy. And in the interface, you could um, slide people in and out if you need them to. Like um, if something happens and you have a BOILD device, that's another thing. Like if I was to take my computer and smash it across my knee, I would go to the Apple store and I can enroll it through BYOD and I'm back in business. Yep. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. One thing I would like to add, though, is that we redid our because right, we did from the testing phase, oh, this worked, and then we redid all our group policy, and like groups, and only took about three days just verified and, and delete the old policies. So is that something that's really flexible to really to, uh, you could really grow with it. Yeah. And when he redid that, we were only at 24 hospitals. We're at 57 now. So the scalability mm -hmm. factor was very important with us that we can just run with it. Um, you mentioned that you have multi-platform device fleet, like Windows, Mac, etc. Unfortunately. <laughs> Is there anything that you are missing in Jam Trust on any of the platforms? No, not really, because if you think about it, right, so we have our Mac OS devices, we have our Windows devices, we have our iPhone, iOS devices, mm -hmm. and we also have Android. So if you think about it, that's all of the market share out there. Yeah. And since we work at hospitals, we don't know what our doctors or nurses are gonna use. We can't force them into something. So they either have an Android mm -hmm. or they either have an iPhone and we can enroll them and give them access. So from that perspective, I don't think we're missing anything unless Apple makes a new product. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. We're gonna be friends, man. We're gonna be friends. <laughs> <laughs> How are you pushing out the activation profiles to your uh, non-Apple devices? I'm so um, that is a very, uh, if I, I didn't make it apparent, is a very sore point to me. Mm -hmm. But I'll explain. Right now, um, we're manually treating it as a BYOD because we don't have enough PCs, but we have enough PCs now that we're looking to manage them. So we're manually sending them the invitation and the activation code. Okay. Good question. But, you know, once... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> muy malo, muy malo, I PCs. Have two, I have two windows in my, in my <coughs> environment, too. So Dude, I, yeah. <laughs> and so I've done the same thing. You know, yeah. With my uh, one test, I just get the user on the phone. And yep. I'm like, okay, here's... here's yep, you know, get on a Zoom call, through. copy, paste, boom. So, yeah. yeah and, and it's fairly painless for them, you know, to, to run that, but... You, you know. You're lucky, you only got two. We got yeah. enough that are out of control yeah. and enough that we need to control. <laughs> so we're in that bad situation. Yeah, the problem is their finance, so it's like, I need, I, you know, <laughs> they need Dude. it more than anybody, so. <laughs> I, I, f I feel your pain. <laughs> 50, no, mas. All right, so do you, do you use device risk-based control function in access policy? If you used, how do you deal with it when user cannot use when risk is higher than what you set? So um, that's something that we're growing into. So right now, uh, we are still flushing out how we're gonna roll out Jam Trust to certain departments because of culture, right? We need yeah. to come at it right. It is internally and heavily used on our support team right now. 
So there is no risk function there because everything is checking in. A couple of times we have to reach out to our PC friends and be like, yo, you need to update. But in our current scenario, we don't need to. I will say that during testing, um, Apple don't get mad. During testing, I took a device and I jailbroke it. And Jamtrust, so the cool thing is when you put Jamtrust, you launch it the first time you sign in, it's kind of like a radar. A radar screen comes out and you see a pinging and then it just turned red and it said no access because it was jailbroken and I got the notification. So it's got some pretty good controls in there. But we're still looking to see, um, to get the right balance of corporate and culture and everybody knows that's a hard line. So once we find that, we'll let you know. We're still, we're still building into it and it's evolving every day. Yeah, change management takes time. Yes, it I does. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, go Fred, dude. <laughs> We're going out for drinks after this. Let's go. Um, go regarding the DNS, um, have you come across any issues with users having trouble with public Wi-Fi when they're traveling? Well, hold on. Here, no, no, here's the thing. You need a drink now? No, no. So, no. So, public. <laughs> look what I did. I nuked and paved my computer on Tuesday. I was on a public Wi-Fi. I was able to re-enroll my computer, get back on Jam Trust, and I was able to hit every device. And uh, we've tested it. I've, I've gone to Starbucks, McDonald's, um, a couple of places, joined public Wi-Fi, because at that point, once you connect, your traffic per demand, if I'm hitting a hospital, is being encrypted. It's not encrypting yeah. everything else. So at that moment in time, it's I'm uh, making a connection to a node, is encrypted, and it hasn't, it hasn't blocked me in any way. I haven't seen any issues in which I have to turn off Jam Trust and turn it back on. It works. Oh, okay. And uh, that was what I was going to no, ask is that well, specifically joining the Wi Fi. Oh, joining the Wi Fi, right? Joining so a public Wi Fi. Joining a public Wi Fi is, is always going to be a problem, right? Because you, if you don't get the pop up screen, like, right, like to, uh, to accept the, yeah. uh, the terms, you know, but Jam Trust does not, get, does not get in the way of that, though. This, we still see the same problem we always seen before with Jam Trust or not Jam Trust on the computer. Yeah, it doesn't block the pop-up. So when you're in a hotel, I'm sorry, when you're in a hotel and you get the pop-up, as soon yeah. as you accept it and there's a connection, you get an IP, that's when Jam Trust starts working. I also like to add, though, I have not seen like an internet provider blocking us. So the uh, previous, mm -hmm. I'm not going to name it, name it, but like we had some issues where a certain particular ISP was blocking our users. Mm -hmm. um, it's with uh, Jam Trust, we have not seen this. We also hear that it works in the Caribbean. There's a rumor. <laughs> it's a rumor. Maybe DR. I don't know. <laughs> Someone has to trust and verify. <laughs> I don't kiss and tell. <laughs> and it was funny because it was routing back to the States. <laughs> Any other questions? I just want you guys to realize that this is not a one-size-fits-all solution. You know, this is something that we accidentally bumped into. And it was a need we needed to solve because we didn't really realize that VPN was such a pain point. And once we got this product, and to be honest, we got this when it was still Wondera, right when Jamf acquired them, you know, we just started asking questions. It was a happy mistake, and it was, you know, one of those situations that if you don't ask the question, you don't know what the answer is going to be. I just sat down and I asked the question, and it took two and a half weeks. I thought Jamf was going to say, you're crazy. And the engineers came back and they said, yeah, we can do this. And that's when I hooked them up with Esteban. So don't be afraid to ask questions. You don't know where you're going to get unless you ask. I would like to add, though, just your network team will be happy with this compared to every other stuff we'll be using. Uh, you... Yeah, so you'll be definitely happy with this. I'm the team. All right, so you'll be definitely happy with this. He's the team, too. <laughs> I'm very happy with this. How many sites do you have? We just have two. So oh, okay. So it's manageable. In our situation, if it was two, we would have stayed with that, right? But since we already purchased Jam Trust for everything else, yeah. we saw, and it could do this? Sure, give me the undercoding. Let's do this. You know, we have, you know, I, I still had users saying, oh, you know, we're a graphic firm. They're uploading to VPN large files and stuff, and they VPN drops and things like you had mentioned. And, you know, I look like right now I can see my my trust, you know, jam trust has been up for a day and two hours now. It's 
solid. It's yeah. just doesn't drop. So that's why I would love to move over to that. You know what it is? It's one of these things. How does the car work? People you just know they put the key or push the start and it works. That's exactly what this is doing. It takes away that, you know, it makes it very seamless. And to the user, that's what's important. To us, obviously, because we want to get sleep and we want to have quality of life. Sure. But to the user, it's very easy. And yes, it's secure. All our traffic is secure yeah. at that point. And have you found anything? <laughs> Go for <laughs> it. <laughs> um, and this is the, the issue I'm having. Have you found an issue with any of your internal resources not connecting properly? Well, that's different. We don't talk about CrowdStrike. <laughs> 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 to be honest, I have, what, uh, the year and a half since, I'm, since we, we launched this. Yeah. There ha we have no issues, right? This is, uh, unless they, you know, there might have been something the, the, with the off with the, uh, the endpoint, mm -hmm. getting the configuration. But I have not come across an issue that I, I had to step in from an equal point of view. Okay. Yeah, neither have I. The only time I run into that issue is because I bounce from machine to machine because I'm testing different things, and then I get on the machine and I try to ping something. I'm like, damn, it's not pinging. Oh, I'm not signed in. Let me sign in. Yeah. Because on my everyday machine, I'm signed in, but on these other devices that I'm testing, I'm not necessarily signed in all the time. That's the only thing I've noticed, but I haven't noticed anything. Mm -hmm. Like, we could hit everything we want as long as it's routed correctly. That, that's one thing though, right? Like if it's not on, like so it's on all the time. So I think like, oh, let me just log into this hospital real quick. So I got to do what I got to do. And then I like, and then it's like, what's the, why is it not working? And then I do all oh, like, oh, can I ping this? Can I ping that, right? From a network point of view. And then I was like, oh yeah, I just need to turn this on. So that's actually the biggest issue I'm facing with it right now. I forget to turn it on once in a while. Yeah, I, I'm just having like, this, this resource works fine. Another resource, yeah, it actually, they're, specifically SMB volumes on the same host. And one will mount, one won't, and can't figure it out. And that's the only thing that's keeping me from pushing this out and rolling it out. I'm not a Windows I've, guy, no. but are you using DNS names for the SMB hosts or IPs? Uh, DNS. Try IPs just for shits and giggles and see what results you get. Yeah. It may be worth a shot. Yeah, I, yeah, working with Jamf and stuff, and they're like, yeah, we don't know. We're, yeah, they looked at everything. We looked at our, our DNS setup. Everything seemed to be working properly. Um, so it's getting us, uh, yeah, it's getting pushed up. So hopefully. Yeah, I, I would like to hook up and see how that works out because that's interesting that it's giving you an issue like that. Yeah. I'm curious to see what the fix is. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Any other network engineers here? No? Any question from anyone else in the audience? Okay. Uh, I have two questions I want to ask. Um, I'm not a network engineer. Um, I can't do the things that you are doing. Uh, but we talked about change management. It's hard. Like, you know, um, in some ways, we are protecting the users, um, and we are protecting the organization and the devices and everything. Like. What are the, some of the best practices that you can share with the group where you, what, that you do to gain the trust of the user so that they understand that you're not going to be in their way of doing their work, but like you, you are there to help them do their work more effectively? One thing I would like to add is just listen to the user, mm -hmm. listen, to their uh, listen to exactly their concerns are, and just, you know, you got to first build, you know, you got to build the personal trust in order to um, to actually start limiting them for certain things. But if you listen to them and you explain it to them, like I know it, it takes it takes a while. Um, that's the best recommendation I could say that I just talk to my users, talk to my uh, to my leadership and explain a case, not just something. Oh, I want to because I need a new project this week. Just let them know that like it's, it's for a reason that I want to do this. And here's the risk if we don't do this. And then you just, and that's how you get people to buy in. To build on top of that, it's never assume, right? Always ask the questions and, you know, trust and verify. You got to show the users what the application is doing, what it's collecting, showing, show them the proof. Uh, the more transparent you can be on why you're rolling something out, the easier the conversation becomes. Just because you could do something as an admin doesn't mean you could, should do it. Yeah. 
that that makes total sense. Uh, the next question I have is that like we probably have a spectrum of audience, like veteran Jamf users, new Jamf users, or someone might be like just listening in to understand what Jamf does. Is there a moment as you started using Jamf that made you trust Jamf and say like, Jamf got my back? I'll, I'm going to add to that one because yeah. I'm a, I'm a perfect example. I've been an Android user before uh, before um, the just what like two two years ago, like mm -hmm. when, when I first met Carlos. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're still friends. So one thing I liked about Jamf so much was that the, the control that uh, the way you can s install apps and stuff. Uh, the one thing I, I started doing though, and like because I'm I'm not, um it's just use uh, Jamf um. Was it uh, now? No, Jamf Cloud. Oh, Jamf now, yeah. Jamf now, the, like the, for the personal user, because it gives you like three, uh, three licenses for free, so you can actually get a better understanding. And then I actually have my personal phone managed that way. Oh. Yeah. For me, it's a little different. Um, I've been using Jamf for 15 years, and I was fortunate enough to be a professional service engineer for Jamf, so I was doing a lot of jump starts. So I've seen many spectrums. Mom and pops, military, which was scary, government banks, corporate, companies, Fortune 100, 400, and it gave me a lot of insight and a lot of view. Once I left and I became, you know, an admin, I was not no longer on that side, Jamf Nation. Um, there isn't a day that I don't go into Jamf Nation. Now, I don't contribute a lot because I'm constantly busy putting out fires, but when I do see somebody struggling and I know the answer, I'll just post it up there. And there was an issue back in the day in which we were trying to, yeah, don't, don't hate me, we were trying to bind a Mac mm. to AD. Okay. And we couldn't figure it out, and I went to Jamf Nation, and I found a post, and somebody had a spe the theme-specific issue. It was very rare, and that person posted the script and posted everything in the gotchas, and I was like, hey, let me give this a try, and it worked. And that was extremely helpful, and that, as a customer, made me trans trust Jamf more because somebody in the community took their time to po post a solution that helped somebody else and countless others. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Uh, we know the Jamf Nation community is large and, and very helpful and very knowledgeable. So, and you've inspired me to mm -hmm. go download Jamf now and enroll my own personal devices to manage. Um, thank you so much, Carlos Esteban. This was awesome. And thanks to the audience for all the questions and all the engagement. And uh, please give a big round of applause to Carlos and Esteban. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a lucky 